today on CityCast DC. This month, DC Public Library won the 2024 National Medal for Museum and Library Service. It's fitting since the district is a city full of bookworms. And that means it's also a city full of book clubs about everything under the sun, from cooking to queer identity and romance. But with so many, how do you know which book club is right for you? Let's revisit the conversation I had with book club connoisseur Serena Zetz last fall about finding the perfect book club. Today's Monday, August 26th. I'm Bridget Todd, and here's what DC is talking about. Serena, what is it about book clubs that DC seems so obsessed with? Yeah, well, DC seems to be obsessed with book clubs because not only are they a place for people to come together and talk about a specific text, but it seems like they've been serving as really, really foundational places for people to make friends and build community beyond either their living space or beyond their workplace here in DC. I think that it's partially because DC, like many cities across the country, doesn't have many what are called third spaces, which are spaces where you can go and exist and not have to spend money. Libraries are historically one of the most renowned and known of third spaces, but things like coffee shops or cafes or even bookstores themselves often require that you spend money in them. But book clubs as an event and as a space are often free and don't require any money, so they're more accessible for people to come and exist, whether you've read the book or not. So I think because they don't exist in the place of work or living, they attract people from all walks of life. That makes a lot of sense. Is DC a hub for any particular kind of literature? Yeah, so probably unsurprisingly to you and to a lot of listeners, DC is definitely a hub for political writing. Tons of people move to DC to work in that field, whether it's reporting on politics or speech writing or doing communications or various writing for nonprofits and advocacy organizations. And you can see that in the book clubs that are here in DC. You see it reflected in very politically minded book clubs of all different types of political affiliations and ideologies. There's book clubs ranging from more like conservative politics to like leftist radical politics, abolitionist book clubs, feminist book clubs, all sorts. Um, And I found that in my research, that's pretty distinct from other cities. A ton of cities have lots of like fiction based book clubs or poetry or different genres, but DC seems to have a ton of political nonfiction book clubs, which makes sense given why a lot of people move or live here. One thing that I know that is particular to DC's relationship to literature and the arts more generally is that while there was the Harlem Renaissance going on, U Street kind of had its own version of the literary renaissance during that time, right? Yeah, it did. So DC obviously has been a historically predominantly Black city, and that's reflected in the literature and the art that has come out of it. Um, And so not a lot of people know the history of the basically U Street Renaissance that was happening around the same time as the Harlem Renaissance, but geographically, D.C. kind of served as a hub for a lot of artists who were moving from across the country and making their way up to New York at that time to join the Harlem Renaissance. And so you saw a lot of artists making pit stops in D.C., searching for other artists and creatives and musicians and writers and kind of gravitating towards the U Street area. Around that time, there were a ton of jazz clubs, like literary saloons, more underground arts and culture scene, which is pretty cool to think about. I think that a lot of people write off D.C., and kind of dismiss the art scene here or don't know much about it. But if you think about its historical roots, it's actually incredibly important to the artistic development of the entire U.S. Of course, cities that are artistic hubs like New York or L.A. are always going to be seen as that. But I think it's really beautiful and special that D.C. has this kind of lesser known like literary tradition. And I think we're seeing a bit of a resurgence today as more and more writers and artists are moving to the city and flocking to spaces like these book clubs. But DC is definitely experiencing a bit of an artistic like renaissance as we're coming out of the pandemic. Tons of productions are happening again and book clubs happening in person as one of those artistic outlets that's picking back up. And so I think that people who have maybe spent the past few years reading alone or like using books as a coping mechanism to get through this really hard time of the pandemic, I think that book clubs could be a great way to wade back into socializing and to making new friends take this thing that you spent the past three years loving doing by yourself and now love doing it with others. Yeah, I mean, it's always so nice to hear about these little, sometimes overlooked aspects of D.C.'s history, particularly Black history. It never ceases to amaze me. There's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's also partially probably why a lot of people are joining these book clubs in the city, because a lot of them are entry points to learning that history. 
the DC Public Library, I know that last year they ran a book club that was specifically to learn more about kind of hidden and uncovered like DC history. I personally was in a book club that read the book Chocolate City about the black history of DC. And so I think that it can be kind of intimidating to learn the history of a place on your own, or it can feel daunting and you could be at a loss of where to start. But joining a book club can be a very easy and accessible way to jump into that history because you're learning with a lot of people who are coming from a whole range of backgrounds and knowledges. So yeah, I think that what you were saying that people are really kind of yearning and excited to learn this history, book clubs can be a great place to start. Let's talk about some of the different book clubs that DC has to offer. The Instagram account Clock Out DC gathered a list of 56 different book clubs around town. What's Mm -hmm. the breadth and the depth of these clubs? Yeah, so she did a great job of capturing the breadth and the depth of these clubs. Pretty understandably, DC has a lot of political book clubs, so that was something that was featured. But her guide goes as far to show there's a book club that's specifically called Reading with Rory about the Gilmore Girls canon. I'm personally a huge Gilmore Girls fan, grew up watching it. And so there's this book club that is for other Gilmore Girls fans to read the over 300 books that Rory Gilmore protagonist of the show reads throughout the entire series. Um, So that's an example of like how niche it can get. Lost City Books and Adams Morgan, they have a whole range of book clubs. And one of their most popular is a romance book club. That's another example of a more specific one that regularly draws a ton of attendees because the romance book club community is one that primarily exists online, kind of similar to like how TV show or music fandoms gather, like they're all tweeting at each other and existing in these online forums. Um, And so it's beautiful to see that those fans have an actual like physical space and location where they can go in DC and gather together. In terms of other niche ones, kind of every bookstore or library in the city, they curate their own book clubs based on their clientele or their patrons. And so there are some bookstores like Little District Books over in Eastern Market is a queer owned and like LGBTQ focused bookstore. So they have a lot of book clubs centered around the LGBTQ community. Sankofa Books, which is up in Petworth, is a pan-African and Black-owned bookstore, so they focus on a ton of um, programming around that identity. There's a whole range for whatever people want here in D.C. Um, It can get as niche as you want or as broad. Let's be real, lawsuits are not fun. But with Paulson & Nace, at least they're a little easier. Paulson & Nace is a D.C. law firm in every sense of the word. It was founded here in 1979. Partner Chris Nace is a local who cares deeply about the D.C. community, even serving on the board of the local branch of the Living Classrooms Foundation in his free time. Nace and his associates Samantha Peters and Maya Perry handle medical malpractice, wrongful death, and other complex injury cases. And they don't just settle every case. They'll go to court. They'll fight for you. Paulson & Nace has even been recognized as one of U.S. News' best law firms. So if you have been hurt or lost a loved one because of someone else's mistake or negligence, call Paulson & Nace for a no-obligation consultation. Visit www.paulsonandnace.com. That's P-A-U-L-S-O-N-A-N-D-N-A-C-E.com. Or call 202-463-1999. It's that time of year again. The Maryland Renaissance Festival is here. And if you've never been, you don't know what you're missing. I go every year because when else can you dress up like a hot medieval knight and double fist turkey legs? There's so much to see and do. It's like a 16th century theme park with shops and pubs, music and performances, all just an hour from DC. My personal favorite is the live jousting, which can get alarmingly competitive and realistic. The festival opens August 24th and runs Saturdays, Sundays, and Labor Day Monday through October 20th. Tickets are online only at MarylandRenaissanceFestival.com, and they're cheaper through September 8th. So get yours now, and I'll see you there. Have you been to any of these book clubs? Yeah, so I attend a couple regularly. I'm up in Northwest, and so I go to some that are physically near me. My One of my favorites is over at Bold Fork Books, which is a cookbook and food writing bookstore in Mount Pleasant that's independently owned. And it's a really beautiful, tiny store, basically one large room full of the most gorgeous cookbooks you've ever seen. And they host a book club once a month where part of the event is that everyone who's attending is encouraged to bring a recipe from the book or bring something that they were inspired or moved to make from having read that book. 
So it's not just an hour of discussion, but it's also you're getting to try new foods and interact with people and learn more about what from the books resonated with them in a very like physical, tangible way. And you get a very full plate <laughs> and it's a lot of fun and a great experience. So I attend that one. I also attend a book club about abolition. I attend a poetry book club. And I've also, those are all formal ones. I've also attended like some more informal, just social and friend hosted ones. Do you have any favorites out there? Yeah. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Lost City Books. Like I was saying in Adams Morgan, I think they have a really great range of events in book clubs. Also Loyalty Books, which is another independently owned bookstore in the DMV. They are kind of kicking up a whole new range of programming. So I'd encourage people to find out more about their book clubs. And then also, I think, utilizing the D.C. Public Library for what I was saying earlier about either learning more about the history of your own community or learning more about just any topic. The library is always a perfect starting point. Do you have any advice for folks that are interested in joining a book club? Yeah, I always encourage my friends who are interested in joining book clubs to just go for it. I think that sometimes it can feel really daunting or you might not know what to expect, but I always remind them that you're not going to know how each individual book club is run until you actually attend. So I would say if there's one that piques your interest, like if you saw something in Clock Out DC's guide that stuck out to you, or if your local bookstore or library has a new book club that seems interesting, I would encourage you to just go. And worst comes to worst, it might not be the right fit for you and you lost an hour, but best case scenario, you end up leaving the event having had a great conversation, meeting new people, maybe finding a new space in DC that you really feel comfortable in. So I think just jumping over that initial hesitancy or hurdle of being unsure what to expect, I always tell people to just go and try it. I think that also the biggest piece of advice I have for people interested in joining book clubs is joining one with a friend or starting one with a friend. It can feel far less daunting if you have a buddy there with you. If you have a friend who perhaps you both like the same activities, like you both like doing outdoorsy things or artsy things, or they might also love reading poetry, maybe finding a book club that's suited for both of you. And that could feel less intimidating. Yeah, I really encourage people to go to book clubs, both that are in their own neighborhood and that are beyond, because it's a great way to explore new places or find new spaces in D.C. that you might love. So what if you've got a niche interest that you want to start a book club around that doesn't already exist? Do you have any advice for the best ways to get your own book club started? So I think the best way to get your own book club started, yeah, one, identify something that's exciting and that you're passionate about, whether that's a specific genre or topic or even just like a theme that you want to center it around. Say for the upcoming summer, you wanted to host a summer book club of either like beach reads or warm weather reads. That could be something you could start with. So identifying a theme, once you've identified that topic, I would also tell people to do some initial research to see if it already exists out there, because that could be a great way to be plugged into a community that already exists that you might not even know about. Like, for example, there's a book club that happens in D.C. where it's part reading, part knitting. And so it's for people that both love to read and love to knit. And so if that's something you're interested in, you might not have known existed, you can find from a quick Google search or asking people in your communities. Yeah, it can be more beneficial to join things that are already happening than rather than hosting it on your own. So I'd encourage people to do some research. In my research for this piece, I found out about so many book clubs that I didn't even know existed. And I already consider myself pretty tuned in. So that was exciting to see that the breadth of book clubs goes far, far wider than I even knew in the city. I think that also if people are intimidated by book clubs. You could even just start by having like a smaller reading group or like a pair discussion with one of your friends or one of your coworkers. Just starting there by finding one person that you enjoy talking about books with could lead to a lot more. And then from there, I would start with informing like your social circles and the people close to you. Because as I was saying before, having a friend to help you, whether it's attending or organizing can always be great. So start by informing your friends, see if there's any interest. And then I would really create like an eye-catching graphic that you could post on social media and get the word out there, or that you could actually physically print and take to local businesses and hang up. Like for example, a lot of coffee shops and bookstores hang up posters for book clubs and community groups, even if they're not affiliated with that space, just on their community boards. So it might be a great way to find more of your neighbors through that. So yeah, identifying a topic, 
reaching out to your own social networks and then advertising it from there. I'm a huge proponent of outdoor book clubs and having events outside. So I think that choosing a location can be very essential. If people want to host a book club, maybe they have a porch that would be wonderful to host it on or at a a public park across the city. I think that can also be a way that makes it less intimidating for people rather than, hey, come to my living room. Hey, stop by the park and come talk about this book might be more of an approachable way to do it. So I would encourage people while we have the weather to have them outside and really make them as like community focused as possible. Beautiful advice. Thanks so much for being here, Serena. Yeah, of course. Thank you all. That's all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, why not share it with the bookworm in your life? You can rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with even more news from around the city. Talk to you then. Bye.